we're in the tracking room. Here we are. Uh, this drum kit is the, the brand new uh, Mapex Black Panther Design Lab Versatis kit. And this doesn't really leave. This stays here. The one thing that happens here a lot is maybe a lot of snare drum changes pending different songs and things like that. I use my, my Artist Series snare drum, which is the Versatis snare, most of the time, almost probably 75% of the time. This is where we track everything. I practice here a lot. Um, everything is basically recorded here on these drums. But mics, I'm sure, KSM uh, 27s on the toms and the old 57 on the snare, which you can't beat. There's a 52 in the bass drum. It's internal on a main mic because there's a full front head. There's a regular 52 on the aux bass drum. And then KSM 44s, which are the larger diameter condenser mics here, and it's in an XY pattern. This is the drum sound. This, this is the drum sound. This brings in each instrument just a little bit to support stuff, but you don't piece the drum sound together by one instrument at a time. The individual drums are there just for pr a presence of that drum in the stereo mix. That's a lot of what people make mistakes. They try to make their drum sound from each individual drum. It's really from the overheads and the room mics and then you sort of support that with little things here and there depending on the music style. But saying that, you have to have a great mix in your playing. That's the key. This you can't change very much. So if it's all cymbals, it's all cymbals, right? Now they got to start bringing drums in and doing things individually. But the great session drummers, the Steve Gads, the Jeff Beccaros, the Jim Keltners, the Carlos Vega, J.R. Robinson, everybody had great mixes. Like, it just sounded mixed already. John Bonham, that's why you could have those great room sounds that John Bonham got because he it was mixed. If he didn't mix that in his playing, there is no Led Zeppelin drum sound. Most of that is room mics. So if it would have been all cymbals and no bass drum in the way he was playing it, no bueno. <laughs> it wouldn't have worked. The reason that drum sound is so great is because of John's personal mix and what he's playing. That's a big, big lesson. It's one of the hardest things. Yeah. Yeah, because you get excited and you want to hit things harder. And over the years, my cymbals are kind of on the same plane. There's not one way up high. Because then if, if this cymbal's up here, every time I hit it, it shoots into the overhead mic, right? And it kind of destroys the mix. you got to know what you're doing stylistically. And then you have to have control in your playing to be able to do that. And I see a lot of younger drummers who are very exciting live drummers. And they have lots of stuff going on, lots of facility and chops. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of pieces, parts missing to be able to capture it well. The other thing from a studio standpoint is really busy tom playing doesn't translate very well onto tape yeah, because there's a lot of tones there's a lot of similar frequencies so if you're going you know do, 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 with all this stuff on the toms it sort of builds up and doesn't really translate with clarity it's not necessarily playing less because there's great recordings like from Rush or Yes or many great recordings where guys are able to play a lot of drums but they played it in a very clear and distinct manner that's really in time and very articulated. That's the key, you know, is getting, to, getting it to translate to tape. And what you don't want to do is become a live-only drummer. The history of what we're doing is in the recording of it, just like we're recording today. If we don't record it, nobody knows about it.